Hey Vineyard family, we're Daniel Nicole Hernandez, pastor and worship leader in Columbus, Ohio. Hola familia Viña, somos Daniel y Nicole Hernandez, pastor y líder de adoración en Columbus, Ohio. From September 15th to October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month, and to celebrate we want to share an exciting new project of Vineyard Worship. But before, we want to let you know that we have a national association gathering coming up April 15th to the 18th called Better Together. Registration is opening soon, so be on the lookout and save the date. Recently, we have been working with Vineyard Worship to organize and increase resources for our Spanish-speaking and bilingual vineyard churches. Recientemente, hemos estado trabajando con Vineyard Worship para organizar e incrementar recursos para nuestras iglesias viña de habla hispana y bilingüe. We have a new Spanish translation team with representatives from all over the U.S. and Latin America, and we are working to translate songs in a way that will work for the majority of our Spanish-speaking churches. Hemos formado un nuevo equipo de de traducción al español con representantes de todos los Estados Unidos y Latinoamérica y estamos trabajando para traducir canciones en una manera que funcione para la mayoría de nuestras iglesias de habla hispana. There are now Spanish translations of many of our vineyard songs along with bilingual songs that have intentionally been written in both Spanish and English. You can find all our Spanish music under the name Adoración Viña, Vineyard in Español, on Spotify, Apple, Pandora, and more. You can find all these resources and more at vineyardworship.com slash adoración and vineyardsongs.com. Links are in the show notes. Puedes encontrar todos estos recursos y más en vineyardworship.com slash adoración o vineyardsongs.com. Los enlaces están en las notas del episodio. <música> Hey, what's up, everybody? You're listening to The Ferment. And today I have special returning guests, Daniel and Nicole Hernandez. What is up, friends? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Hola. W- <laughs> that's right. Hola. So glad to have you here. And we're at the National Conference. So I don't know when this is releasing, but this is a National Conference edition. And uh, we were chatting in the hallway the other day. And we realized, oh, we should probably have a little conversation because one of the things that's been coming up out of conversations inside of our Vineyard Worship Essentials training cohort, that's a mouthful, is this question about beginning to insert Spanish into our worship times. What's been coming to you, Nicole? Because this is something that you've been a cohort leader and you've been having some people ask you, like, what are we doing? So what do you want to say about that? Yeah, uh, it's been it's been a beautiful space. We've been having these conversations. You know, we do the weekly meeting, and people have been recognizing the the new people arriving just from their spaces in their cities to their churches, and they speak another language. And so, the majorities of you know, at least what we're hearing from the people in the cohort I was a part of was Spanish came on the table a lot. How do we sing in Spanish? How do I do this even if I don't speak Spanish? You know, how can I incorporate this? That's right. What do I do? So That's right. That's so good. And I love that that's an organic question that's bubbling up from the conversations that you're having. But let's maybe take one step back. And uh, Daniel, can you just refresh us all on who you guys are and where you live and what your daily pastoral life is, uh, where God has you planted? All right. Um Well, I'm Daniel, Nicole, my wife. We have been married for 15 years. Yeah. Came to, well, Nicole was born and raised here in the United States, and I'm from Venezuela. Yeah, it's been 10 years here in this country. Now we live in Columbus. We just launched like six and a half months ago. We launched a a campus, a second Hispanic campus in in the city. Um, so and you're in that you're in that whole Columbus yes, church and, network, right? Yeah. Well, what neighborhood are you in? Uh, it's called Grandview. Okay. So it's I would say it's in the middle of two big Latino demographic density. Right. Yeah. So it's been great. Like it's been a beautiful space. There's lots of people coming from Latin America to Columbus now. So why why are why are the Latin Americans coming to Columbus right now? I have now? no idea. Because <laughs> you don't like, even know, right? Like no, yeah. I mean, they're like, just appearing. No, but I mean we're relational, so I guess that once we get a group of Yeah, that's right. Family yeah, you tell comes. your family. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. So. Nicole, will you just tell us what your church is like now? Like your service. 
Mm. Uh, I, I assume Spanish people are coming, but probably they maybe have kids who speak Spanish and maybe That's true. speak English. It's a beautiful space. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were Saturday night service. Oh, the Saturday night service. At six o'clock. Okay. And it's been great because we'll even have people who are looking for a Saturday service come through and they might not speak Spanish at all. There's also um, bicultural couples, you know, so the spouse yes. may speak Spanish and the other doesn't. And, oh, yeah. um, and then you have generations. That's an American story, isn't it? Yeah. That's such yeah. an American story. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and often you'll have families who have maybe put down roots 10, 15 years ago. And so their kids maybe are more comfortable with English. So even in the kids ministry, you'll see a kid who has, you know, it's been here for two weeks and doesn't speak any English. And then another child who's in there who has lived their whole life in the U.S. and does not speak Spanish very well. So you need, we kind of need everybody to, to have their hands. And so we have bilingual services for the most part. And we will sing always in Spanish and English, and the sermon is primarily in Spanish, and sometimes we have uh, English translation available for people, Right. and then we also sometimes have pastors come in, and they speak English, and we'll translate it live into Spanish, so it's it's a bit of work, but it's it's been That's really right. good. Yeah, so you guys are working at both directions. Okay, so Daniel, tell me about worship, and singing in Spanish, and sp singing in English, you know, in the same context or the same service. Tell me, tell me how you think about that. Yeah, I mean, wh one of the things uh, that I, I was actually nervous at the beginning, like when we start singing songs in, and, and adding a lot of English in the songs, and I was nervous. I mean, Nicole is the one that leads mostly every Saturday, but I, I'm sitting there and I'm nervous because I'm like, oh, I don't know, like that seems like a lot of English, but people love it. Like, like first is like, well, they want to learn English. But also, th there is something like, okay, this is also the language that my kids are sp in, uh, speaking, and the, my kids are singing, my spouse is, it feels welcome here. So, because we have people that are a little nervous. I don't know how my spouse is going to feel in this community. He's yes. uh, introverted, and he's a little reserved, and, but now there's English in the screens, and there is uh, songs in, in English. So, it's like, oh, they're welcoming my spouse. So, that's, yes. yeah, so it's been, that part has been great. That's really interesting because part of what I'm hearing and what you're saying is you guys have a, a church that's pointed at Hispanic people and part of your hospitality is to add English, right? That's, that's true. Right. Isn't that funny? Yeah. But what, what we're going to talk about today is, you know, maybe a English dominant service. How can we be hospitable towards mm. Hispanic people and how do you actually put Spanish in in a way that that helps welcome new people but then also keep the people you have on board so right. I, you know I don't know man that's 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 just a really beautiful thing yeah, well, um, Nicole talk to us like what are some maybe the high points of you know you're a worship leader uh, most of the people at your church are English speakers or maybe all English speakers but you've noticed some may, maybe some new families are coming and they're Hispanic and you want to drop something in at Spanish, give me, give me the high points of best practices, wisdom. Wh what do you know? What should we do? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I would say one of the first things, if I'm, a, right, if I'm a leader, I don't speak Spanish, and I am noticing this, I would want to have that conversation first of like how and why. So the why is with my pastor, you know, I'm noticing this. I'm sure you're noticing as well. How can we do this and why should we do this? So then expressing that to the rest of the team, staff, and why are we opening up this space in our service to then include another language and creating space for people to then feel welcomed when we're singing in our language, our heart language. It's often what you say in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, when you're singing in your heart language, then it feels intentional. It feels like it just goes a little bit deeper and that feels super hospitable uh, toward people to have that direct connection with God. So I would say, uh, yeah, I would say have that why conversation first. Yes, yeah, start digging um, in there. And definitely while considering demographics, you know, and you're noticing maybe that if it's the Latino culture, and I, I, I'm just saying this, like maybe it's not, you know, Hispanics that are that are starting to come around. Maybe it's, um, maybe there's a, a huge influx of uh, an Asian sure. uh, you know, demographic coming through. Um, so anyways, I would say start there first, but, but considering 
if we are already with Spanish demographic or Latino demographics, I would say one of the first things, once you're all on the same page with that, like, yes, let's do Spanish. Let's like include it somehow. And I still don't speak Spanish. One, I would say is start easy and start familiar. So if you're singing a classic vineyard song and you, a good resource would be vineyard uh, songs.com or even any of our pages, any of our platforms. And we have Adoración Viña. And you can see that as a tag on YouTube, you know, on, yes. is it in Spotify, um, Apple Music as well. And just, I would say, start listening, right? Like what's grabbing your ear? What sounds like, oh, maybe I can pronounce that. I can, I can do that. And then my next thing is definitely, definitely like talk to someone who this is their native language and say, hey, I want to know how to sing this part of the song. And by starting with easy and familiar, I would say if it's a classic vineyard song like Breathe or Holy and Anointed and say, I, I would love to do this course or this verse. How do I do this? Am I saying this right? I think we're honoring in that Yeah, you're space. not having to learn the melody. You right. already oh. know how to play the chords. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you're learning the fine tuning on the, like, just the pronunciations. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really brilliant. Yeah. And so I, I think also in that, you know, I'm saying, okay, I can say Cristo or I can say Te Amo, right? Like, yes. Cristo, Te Amo. So if I can do that, then I can do a little bit more. So um, when we are intentional about these things, and I, I think that that's going to speak past errors, you know, it's it, we're we're entering into that space of, including and so even if i make a mistake i still think that w it's so appreciated the idea of even having a chorus or a verse in my language you yes. know if i'm if i'm a native speaker and i'm coming in and listening to that so i would say maybe don't let fear stop you yeah as someone who doesn't know the language and that's how i started so like you know just not knowing what i was saying but hoping that i was saying it right and then just leading from that space and then having confirmation with people checking i love that idea of helpful. working it out with a native speaker you know and going hey let me sing something to you is this right and i've never thought of actually like working that out with them beforehand um daniel let me ask you something though you are a native speaker mm -hmm. spanish is your heart language i think that's the phrase nicole used when we go what does it mean to you when you come into like an english dominant space and someone tries to sing in Spanish. Yeah. Well, l let me just tell you, like, I, yesterday we had the association and we have the Hispanic Association singing in Spanish, and I'm playing bass, and at some point I was r about to start crying because I see everyone raising hand and even trying singing in Spanish. Yeah. Like, and I felt like home. I felt like, wow, there's a lot. You know, something that... I would say personally, and the stories that I've been hearing here and there with the Latinos is one of the struggles is that for years, people might feel invisible. Mm. You know, like you can be a doctor, you can be a, but here you are pretty much invisible. Mm. So every You're talking about in the church. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yes. Or, and, and sometimes in, in some, some cities you are like, okay, like, mm. anyways, I won't go there. But, but the fact that that this church, even if it's just one person, even if it's just me and he's singing in Spanish, even if it's one verse, I feel noticed. I feel like, wow, they are thinking about me. God noticed me here. Yeah. So, and it feels like it, it lands different too. Yeah. Like uh, when I sing that, that line or that phrase, I don't know, I feel like I can fully express what I want to the Lord in that moment. So it's like, yeah, and, and it's restful too. Like, yeah. I don't have to try or think too much in what I'm saying, but I just say it. Yeah, yeah and you're kind of getting back to what Nicole was talking about a moment ago, the why. This mm -hmm. is the why, mm -hmm. right? Like, Because it does something to the people who are in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So, Nicole, what I'm hearing you say is pick something classic that you already know. Maybe just a piece of the song. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. And a and song, I mean, maybe it's not, it, maybe it doesn't even have to be a classic. Maybe it's a song that the church is singing and, we, and they know so well, right? And they could sing it and it could be a newer song, but just one that I think the church knows very well. I mean, there you could branch outside of Vineyard now at this point, right? Like Hillsong. And, uh, but again, I would say if you are going to go outside of Vineyard to just check again with a native speaker because not everything is translated literally. Say more about this because this is something I'm learning about through conversing yes. with you guys. Yeah. 
the way maybe a Mexican would translate a song is not the way mm. that maybe Venezuelans would speak it or that's somebody right. from Chile. Yeah, it's so yeah, true. Say something about that because that's very cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I'll, I can speak first and then you yeah. can uh, yeah. share as well. But I would say that... So I have a, a funny example. I mean, I didn't tra do this translation, but at one point, words that are very specific to culture could be used, like chévere, you know, and you're like, oh, that's great. But not everybody says that. And so, which means cool or great or, you know, and so that can become an issue when you're trying to sing in a different country that does not use that word specific. Right. Um, and I think actually the, the part that we want to work toward with creating translation teams and doing official translations is so that way we can pull people from different spaces, different countries and say, Hey, like I think even though this could be a literal translation, I think we can get to the heart of the song. So I think it, it means more if we can listen to the song, learn the words, hear what the heart of the song is and then translate that yes. because that reaches further than trying to fit in all the words of the little trans literal translation. So. Right. Yeah. Daniel, what do you want to say about that? Tell, tell me tell me about uh, a Venezuelan understanding of Spanish versus maybe s another place. Oh, well, I can tell, like, uh, I, I have to preach almost every Saturday. Yeah. And many times I have to use kind of like dictionary words because <laughs> if I go Venezuelan, like, like the, the people from Mexico are going to be like, uh, what does that mean? Is that like... That is so interesting. Yeah, or, or you see some people laughing in one group. And the, so I try to illustrate with examples from different places or use words that everybody understands or equivalent words. Dude, we're just always contextualizing, aren't we? Yeah, always. Yeah. So it's, but but it's, it's a lot of fun, to be honest. Like, yeah. Now with worship, I'm actually excited to know that the, the translation team is from all over, actually. Yeah. Mexico, Chile, like, because uh, it, it, it takes... Uh, a lot of conversations to get and land in the same place. So, but everybody's like so far has been really willing to, hey, we just want to support, help, and here's my transla translation. We just need just a final voice to. I love that. Like, put everything I love that. in order. This brings up two thoughts for me. Um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago, I was, I was in England. I was uh, with the UK guys and I was speaking over there. And I had this section of my sermon where I, like in my notes, I'd kind of like, there's this point I'm trying to get across and I'm going to get this across in, in a real silly way that, that I think is just hysterical, right? And if I were preaching this at home, my people would be dying. I'm there and the, and the Brits are like, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> no. I'm getting nothing, right? And I'm like, wow, this is very interesting. And then a little bit later in my sermon... I say something that I don't, I don't even think about. The whole room is like crying with tears. And I'm going, man, the humor, is so, yeah, yeah. humor is so geographic, isn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of getting to what you're talking about. Like the words are so geographic. It's so location oriented. It's so specific to where we came from. Language is so strange. And, yeah. and that's the beauty of translation too. Like it, it helps when you understand the culture that the song is being written in. Like, it, sometimes uh, po poetry in, in, in English is way different. So you have to contextualize, contextualize the heart of it more than the words. So that's that's the beauty of it. Like there's, there are songs that I actually I'd rather sing in English than in Spanish. Okay, so it, just tell me, say, what is that? That's so yeah, funny. Yeah, because it, like uh, once I understand what it means or how it lands, yeah, it actually has some emotions uh, tied to it. So when I translate wow. it, it's like, a, ah, I don't feel the same thing when I'm singing these lines. Yeah. So it's, uh, Spanglish is awesome but, uh, because it, it keeps both, like, you put the best lines in the language that lands. Yeah, there's no way. translations. We exactly. just wrote it that way. Yeah, beautiful. Well, uh, Nicole, what I heard you say a moment ago was, at least for the songs that maybe come from vineyardsongs.com, those translations have passed through some sort of a translation team and for the most part are solid and are, are getting to the heart. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know, and we had a meeting, right, yes. yesterday. And that was so special because we're all jam-packed in this tiny room. Dude. And excited to hear, like, pretty much a bunch, a bunch of, like, announcements, right? Of, like, yeah. this is where we're going. This is where we've been. And, and I was thinking about that and looking around the room and just thinking about even where we're at right now and seeing where we've gone, come from. And, again, I'm stepping into the story, like, maybe only a decade or so through but it's been beautiful to see how even vineyard 
has made space already, you know, going from what I can remember, maybe just sitting at one table and then um, to a whole like, I'd say like 80 people, right, last night yeah, at the I hangout. So yeah, um, I say all of this to say, I, as I'm looking at translations and as I'm working through, hey, is this working or, or looking at albums of what we've done before and what has come before, it's a beautiful legacy of work that has been put in over time and all of the space, again, that Vineyard Worship and Vineyard USA has made to have Spanish, you know, at the front, at the forefront. And so... Thinking, thinking through all of those translations, it's it's a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of weight mm -hmm. sometimes. But yes, I would say like there has been so much work that has been done and and it's beautiful to step into that. And so again, thinking toward like future translations and future bilingual songs, right? Um, that's a, a wonderful space to walk into, and and I'm excited about what's going to happen. We're currently working on King of Heaven, yes, um, and so we'll have that out soon. Good, hopefully. Well, yeah. uh, I want to go back to something you said, though. For the most part, the stuff that's on VineyardSongs.com has passed through some kind of a team that's dispersed around the world and around the, con uh, around the country. And then if you were to go outside of the vineyard, like maybe you grab a hill song or something like that, and you want to bring some Spanish into your service through one of those songs, you might want to, you might want to ask some of your other native speakers to go, is this the way you would say it? Yes. Yeah. Because yes. we're not sure that those translations have passed through a team. It may Correct. have just been a person on the internet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. It may have been chat GPT. We don't know. <laughs> Google <laughs> yeah. Translate. Mm. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we don't know. Yeah. Well, that's good. Since we're on this idea of translation, could either of you just talk a little bit about some of our plans going forward? You know, the, some of the stuff that we want to do in terms of resourcing uh, the local church, both on the Hispanic side, but then also on the English speaking side for incorporating spanish songs into their local church yeah yeah um so ideally i would think it would be great to create these bridge spaces for people who speak one or the other languages and making it accessible so again referencing back to vineyardsongs.com is wonderful because if you just go there right now and you see a word maybe you can't pronounce it and i know it's a bit of a mouthful just over on the side, it says Adoración Viña, right? And so if you just go there, all the drop-down songs that, are, that you'll see sh pop up will, will be the songs that have been translated, have been checked through, they've been revised. Some of them might include videos. Hopefully we'll get all the videos. So I, I think the plan going forward is making sure all of the charts are there. Making and that sure. they're right. And that they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. get some chords in there, yes. you know, make sure those are right. Yes. Make it available in Adoración Viña directly and also through Vineyard Songs. If I see a song and it's form us and wait, is that the Spanish and does it link up? And so to make sure all of those back and forth are correct, if I'm English to Spanish, Spanish to English. Yeah, for um, either way. For either, either way, way. Yeah. yeah. And then also, ideally, it would be great to have like even the bilingual chart for those people who just like, can I just have this all in one space, you know, and to have Dude. that. Um, and then I would think after that would be uh, having videos, right? Because maybe I don't know how to say these words again. We're going back to how do I do this well? Yeah. How do I sing this well? I want to step into this. I, I understand there's room for error, but I also don't want to make too many errors. So is there a way I can learn how to pronounce this? So right. that would be long term. You know, let's make sure Next we're steps. filling in all of those. And then moving forward would be, what are those songs that we're putting out now that are translatable to have English going into Spanish uh, alongside the bilingual songs and making mm. sure those charts are, and videos are up as well. Well, you know what? And this just makes me think, we'll just drop a pin in something, you know, here on the podcast, we're going to put a pin on it. Whatever the gathering we do is in the spring, whether that's a retreat or like a, a big vineyard conference, Vineyard Worship Conference in the spring, uh, probably April or May. We probably should just have a breakout session for this, shouldn't we? Like we should just, we should just have you guys come and just lead that moment for people, and just do the next things. Because uh, I think this is one of those issues that's growing, and we want to just keep making space, keep making space, and and keep opening those doors wider and wider and wider because we actually have the talents to do it now. And maybe we, maybe we didn't in years past, but we absolutely do now. And there's the hunger for it too. Like, I right. mean, yeah, like I see a lot of openness from, for people like 
I want to learn how to do this. I want to. I want to do. I have a neighbor that just moved in that is speaking only Spanish, and I want to invite him to our church. And like, it's, there's more and more desire to to include. And so, yeah. Okay, let me ask you this, um, just very practically. What are a song or two that maybe we haven't mentioned that would be really easy to pull a piece out of? Because you guys maybe know some songs where the Spanish is very approachable. It would mean a lot to Spanish speakers, but then it's very approachable for English speakers. Is there anything that comes to mind that we haven't mentioned? You should answer that, Nicole, because <laughs> like, as a, because you, your first language is English. So it's like, in my, oh, in my opinion, it's like a, a, everything is approachable for me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nicole, anything come to mind? Uh, well, so I would say slower songs are usually easier. Okay. Um, so start with those. Uh, and of course, the bilingual stuff. So Familia. Yeah. Um, and I would say uh, Breathe. There's these. There's a lot of really classic ones that uh, that do that very well. Um, when you when you hear songs like, um, let's see, only an anointed. I know we already mentioned, but because the words are sung slower, um, uh, yeah. Some of the ones that I think Holy that we could, yeah, yeah, one. yeah. It's just Santo y Ungido, right? So you're then those Santo are the Santo y yeah, yeah. It's easy, right? Yeah, very easy. Um, I would say. Um, Mm, I think songs that also mind. that have, um, like, the chorus are like, um, like, all for you, Jesus. It's all for you. So yeah, it, it repeats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but also, the, it's not like a fast-paced type of. A, even when the song, it doesn't need to be that slow. Like, yeah. you can. It's true. Yeah. Uh, breathe well, and the, sing out was also. Oh the yeah, chorus yeah. For that one's pretty easy to sing. Well, and you know what? That's even cool even all for you, Jesus. You could just pull that chorus. Exactly. Right. You wouldn't even, even if you didn't do the whole song and you could tag it into another song because that just works. You know, another one sometimes uh, that is just easy. It's that tag from Wonderful. Oh, you are great and wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you are. Yes, you are. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is tan magnifico. It is tu, it is tu, it is tan magnifico. And that's just it. Just do that, you know? That's easy. Yeah. Or we could, we could do um, that I love today. your presence. Just oh, sing yeah. that, just okay. sing the chorus. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, give me, give me. I love your presence. What is that? Anhelo estar en tu presencia. Easy. Man. Like we can do that. Yeah. We can do that today. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. And um, and also these are songs that even even people who are maybe outside of the vineyard coming into vineyard spaces, if they're Christians, they they probably have some knowledge. Like I love your presence. The world knows that song. So why not go ahead and pull the Spanish version of it? Nicole, I know you got some notes over there. I'm seeing on your phone. <laughs> uh, is there anything that we haven't covered yet that you think needs to come to the top? Uh, slides or talk words, to me. whatever we're calling them now. Talk uh, to me. Lyrics. <laughs> yeah, talk to me about presentation. That Yeah, there that was go. the one that I think was the biggest question because, yes, I'm making the effort, right? Then I'm going to sing it, but what about the words, right? So I would, again, say where your native, native speakers, if I'm not native, if my production team is not a native speaker, have someone look at the words. You um, have to have it written out correctly. Yeah. A letter can throw people off, and that's not uh, hospitable. <laughs> right. That makes <laughs> so, a lot of sense. Um, and then I would also say it depends on your team. Depends on what the what it is, you know, how fast are your slides moving. I think ideally, my favorite is when you can have English and Spanish. Oh, another good song is a uh, uh, Great Are You Lord. Yeah, really easy to sing just that chorus over and over again, or even just the bridge. And so even writing that out, right? Like Great Are You Lord, Grande Eres Dios. To have them both there gives me freedom as the leader to then sing back and forth. That would be my favorite. That would be my my top choice. But if you have if you need to really roadmap to really just make it accessible, even just having like, you know, Spanish, English, uh, and then making sure that the words are where they should be. To I love it. What I love it. Daniel, is this what you guys do at your church for the slides? Do you guys put up both? Or are you guys putting up Spanish only? Sometimes, but I think uh, lately we have been doing a, ro a clear roadmap yeah. for the production. And it's, it's easier when the person behind is bilingual yeah so, that makes sense yeah. that makes sense but that's totally doable it's doable yeah yeah, yeah that feels good uh anything else in your notes nicole because i don't want to miss it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm thinking uh, commit to do it for a certain time like just don't try it it didn't work that's on that sunday and mm. then 
you don't do it again. Yeah. No, try it for a good season because yeah. it takes a while and you're discipling people too also. Like yeah. you're teaching them like, hey, hey, we're doing this. Wisdom. Yeah, and it's like we need to always tell them this is a value. This yeah. is not something that we want to just do. It's like we believe in this, we believe in that's the future. So yeah, yeah just I'll tell you one that. story uh, just from my little neck of the woods. I My church is in Campbellsville, Kentucky. It's very white bread. Uh, has become increasingly Hispanic. Sorry, I never heard that. You've never heard that before? Yeah, I see some <laughs> of my some, some of my jokes is coming in. It's getting you though. It's it's touching that Venezuelan humor. And it's you know, my little city has become increasingly Hispanic. And we've always had some Hispanic people at our church, but not really, you know? But all of a sudden, we have more families. And in my second service, there's like one whole side and it's it's Hispanic people. So we started singing in Spanish. Like we want to sing in Spanish no matter what, like once a month. And if we can, more. And we're trying to get our worship leaders to become more comfortable there. Glenn is very comfortable there. Hannah at my church is very comfortable there. And then everybody else is a little nervous, right? Mm -hmm. They're a little nervous. But we've incorporated the bilingual tunes from the vineyard and like God of Rest. It's just a song we do. And, and, like my my old country people, you know, my old gray haired people, grannies, they just they just sing this song and it's like it's so easy. And then my Hispanic people love it. And uh it's been a really it's been a really cool connection that doesn't take you know, if I put my pastor hat on here, doesn't take any more real effort and doesn't take any more time because it's it's we're gonna sing, right? And then we've connected with these people at a in the heart it's been a really really cool thing yeah and and if you want to go even deeper then i would say uh study a little bit of the art like a, a, a meaning maybe translation is a beginning but then what if we start incorporating some latin rhythms what yes. if uh, wh well, what if we next start conversation right <laughs> yeah. what if we i feel like we can have a whole conversation yeah, about that so and and sometimes i mean the song could be all in english but just having that little hey there's a little conga here. here what there's what's something going happening. on yeah exactly yeah yeah um, well, I would say, going back to the idea of, you know, if we're starting with what's familiar, starting with what's easy, and maybe you're noticing that's working out, and even going with what you were saying about, like, give it a season, you know, give it a couple months, right? Don't don't cut it short. And I would say stick to that song, right? Are we are we committing to this one song? Let's try it a couple weeks in a row or try it, you know, how, yeah. whatever that alteration is. Uh, and um, I would say then take it slowly after that also, right? Like just, okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's try another one. And for those who are feeling a little nervous, maybe even just have, I, we were throwing around this idea when we were talking in the cohort of having like a cultural night. We've never done it, but I love the idea. And I think it would be great to try out where, hey, we have a lot of people coming from Colombia or yes. a lot of people coming specifically from Mexico or wherever it is, or maybe it's Korean or, you know, whatever it is. So I would say... Have a night where you try the food, you know, listen to the music, invite someone who's a professional musician in sure. the genre that's really common in that region or, you know, that country. And then uh, to getting to maybe a training for people who are like, yes, I'd love to try singing now, but I'm really nervous. I don't know how to do this. And giving them a handful of songs, you know, asking someone, I, I think... A really amazing thing, a bigger project would be to like break down pronunciation, right? And then help people really like, this is how you say it slowly and then working into right. it and going over it and just do the chorus. Again, just do the chorus. Just start out. Well, we train it. everything else, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, we train everything else. We teach people how to be better musicians. We help people sing harmony. We teach people how to run sound. And maybe part of the new frontier for us in Vineyard Worship is to teach people to sing in more languages mm -hmm. than one. Maybe that's like part of the future, you know? And and I was gonna say about the being nervous. I actually wanna encourage people when, when if you feel nervous about trying singing in Spanish, that's okay. Yeah. And and that's actually a connection point because and, and I hope that when you feel nervous, it triggers compassion in you. Because if you feel nervous trying to speak another language, well, that's how these people that are coming to your church feel every day trying a different language. So. Daniel with the pastoral words. <laughs> so good, man. That's a great word. And it's 100% true. Yeah, because all of those people, are they, they're carrying some of that anxiety with them when they come into our spaces. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I think our efforts speak louder than our errors. Mm. 
And so I think we should lean into that. I think mm. we need to make the effort. Yeah. And it's going to speak more. Well, we're not going to say anything more beautiful than that. Our efforts are louder than our errors. That's beautiful. Hey, guys, uh, thank you for the work you're doing. And thank you for the work that you're going to do. Blessings on your church. And Lord, would you just let us fix everything at vineyardsongs.com and make it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 And hey, we'll do some more of this, okay? More podcasts to come. All right, everybody. Peace. Hey, everyone. Casey Corum here, producer of the podcast. Thanks for listening. As always, if you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. First of all, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Also, connect with us on social media, Instagram at the Ferment Podcast and Twitter at Fermentcast. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace. Peace.